Hi friends, welcome back to Bonus Time with Bando. I'm Teacher Bando. I'm here to read a great story today. If any of you know me, you know I love space. So I have this really cool book called Space for Smart Kids. And it's a guide to astronauts, gravity, rockets, and the atmosphere. It's written by Carlos Pazos. You ready? Here we go. Greetings, future space experts. I am Valentina, the astronaut, and this is my rocket, my spaceship. Together, we will travel very far, all the way to outer space. Will you join us on this incredible adventure? Cool. So this is how they're going to go up into the atmosphere. You can see there's different stages. There's the troposphere, which is 20 kilometers high. And that's about where rainbows and planes are. And then there's the stratosphere, which is 50 kilometers up. That's the ozone layer. That's where our big helium-filled weather balloons go. And then we have to fly even higher. Outer space begins at 100 kilometers. But before we get there, there's the mesosphere. That's the last part of our atmosphere. That's why we see these uh, shooting stars and meteors burning up in the atmosphere. Shooting stars are really cool. And then we get to outer space at 100 kilometers and the thermosphere is 500 miles, which is 800 kilometers up. And then the exosphere, 10,000 kilometers up. That's outer space. That is the International Space Station. People live up there and do science. It's not easy to travel this high. Something is keeping us chained to the ground. This phenomenon is called gravity, which is what attracts objects with mass to other larger objects and other objects in general. To understand this better, imagine the small, that small creatures on Earth, like these, are holding on to us and connecting us to the Earth, and they won't let us fly away. So that's just using imagination. But if there were these little creatures that wouldn't let us fly away, that's, that's what it would look like. They'd have to hold all of us down. But if we want, we don't have to do that. We have gravity holding us down for us. It's invisible, we can't see it, but it's the force that keeps us on the, our feet on the ground, on the earth. If we want to escape gravity, we have to fly very quickly, like a, like a cannonball. <laughs> She's getting away, said the little friends trying to help out. To do this, we need to use rocket. rockets, machines that fly very high and very fast. They come in many shapes and many sizes. We have rockets, best friends all here. So the rocket that she's taken, astronaut Valentina is right here. And we have the Long March rocket. This one is from China. We have the Ariane 5, which is from Europe. You can see the booster rockets right there on the side. You can see the Soyuz from Russia. And that is the booster rockets for the Soyuz. That's where Yuri Gagarin went to space. He was the first person to go to space. And we have the Saturn V right here. That is the biggest rocket that's ever been built by the United States. That's the rocket that people went to the moon in. In fact, the people were in that tippy tippy top right there before it goes to the point. That's where the people were. It's so cool. Rockets help us carry all kinds of things from Earth communication satellites, manned spacecraft, weather probes, scanning probes, telescopes. Those, those, um, those probes and those telescopes, those tell us a lot about the universe and the secrets of where we live. Rockets can be divided into stages. This way, you can combine smaller rockets to create a bigger rocket. Here we have the first stage. This, let's see, first stage and second stage, and then the third and more. So check it out, here's how the stages work. This is a one stage rocket right there, you see that? This is a two stage rocket, one, two. This is a three stage rocket because you have one, two, and then the two little booster rockets there. And then look at this, right there we have two booster rockets, another stage and another stage. So actually, we have one full stage here and two stages there. That's really interesting. The bigger the payload, that means the bigger the cargo they're trying to get into space, the bigger the rocket has to be because they need more fuel to escape Earth's gravity. So to make the stages work together to go farther and carry heavy items into space, they have to work together. And they go up so high up in the sky. Well, it's ready, rocket. Now we just need to find our First stage, so it can help us launch into space. Woo, says Rocket. We're gonna build a liquid propellant rocket, and here are its many parts. Okay, there's a fuel tank, 
There's an oxidizer, there's a propeller, and there's a frame. And so all of these parts are gonna get put together to make the first stage of the rocket. You can see them right here. We connect the tanks to the propeller and we fit that inside the frame. So there's the fuel and there's the oxidizer. And you can see they each have a tube that goes down to the propellant right there. The propeller is basically where all of that fire comes out of. But you need these two to mix with these tubes. And when they mix right there, that's when they mix together and there's a little spark so it catches fire and it combusts, which means it catches fire. And then lots of force comes shooting out the bottom of the rocket. Once that is complete, we put the other rocket on top. That might be where our payload is. That's the cargo going to space or the people going to space. And look, it can be taller than the Statue of Liberty. That's so interesting. Well, it's time for me to get ready too. So I'll start to put on my spacesuit, says Valentina. There is a hard upper torso. That is a very important part. She can move around her arms, but that part is very stiff. And she has pants with a lockable ring. That means that the pants lock in with the top and they're airtight. You can see right there, that ring is airtight, which means no air can get in and none of her air can get out. She's got her helmet and her boots and her lightweight hat with headset. That's how she can communicate with the mission control, the other people that are keeping her safe. And here's a control panel that might help her with her life support and the things that help keep her alive in space. Yep, there's her life support right there. She's got her gloves. Well, that's no fair. I wanna be like Valentina. I wanna get ready to go to space. I'll put on my helmet and I'll be ready to go too. Should I go? Okay, here we go. We'll keep reading. Rocket, I'm ready. I'm ready to come up. You probably can't hear me very well like that, can you? Okay, Rocket, I'm ready. Let's get ready to go. Rocket, I'm inside. If we want to launch, we need to turn on the propeller. Okay, when we turn on the repeller, the propeller, we release the fuel and the oxidizer at the same time in the combustion chain, in the combustion chamber. You can see it right there. When those two mix, just like I mentioned, they explode and then out the bottom is the thrust from all that fire. That's what pushes that rocket off of the ground. And so it's very simple. The rocket flies just like a balloon losing air. You know, you ever blown up a balloon and then when, when you let the balloon go, it flies off until it's out of air. And then when it's out of air, it falls down. The air was making it propel upwards. That was giving it its lift. The hot gases come out below and while that is combusting, the rocket rises and rises. Three, two, one, blast off! Or as they say on the pad, lift off. Once they're in space, we separate from the first stage. And since the rocket also has its own motors and fuel, we continue on our way. So they drop the first stage in space when the first stage has run out of fuel. That helps it get out of Earth's gravity and then the rocket can take care of the rest. Meanwhile, the first stage returns to the Earth thanks to gravity. Yes, we have you. You thought you could have escaped us, say those little gravity beings. That's so funny. But this is actually a returning one from the company called SpaceX. They developed a rocket that when you launch it, the first stage, instead of going back down into the ocean, it will fly back and parachutes will slow it down. And then right before it gets to the, to the landing pad, it will fire retro rockets and have a perfectly smooth landing and they can reuse it again. That's really important because we're always trying to find ways to reduce our waste, right? That's one of the ways scientists figured out how they can reuse a fuel stage. So now we're gonna go to Mars. So since Mars moves in its own orbit, we have to chase it. So that means if we launch from Earth right here, we can't just go in a straight line because the sun and everything else is in the way. We have to launch out of Earth's gravity and then slowly pick up, actually quickly pick up speed and try to catch 
Mars and its own orbit. You can see right there. So we're gonna try, if Mars is here, we can't just launch there. We have to wait for Mars to be in its spot in its orbit. It takes scientists lots of calculations. So that's why it's really important to study math and science and all of the things that you can learn about these things. So when you grow up, you can help do really cool things like this too. In space, there is no gravity. So we float. Mars is very, very far, about 140 million miles away. It will take us several months to reach the red planet. That's a long time, isn't it? We're gonna have to prepare to arrive and then prepare to land. Okay, they landed. They landed safely on the surface. Thank you, Rocket. I could have never done this without you. And now that we're space experts, we can explore this red planet together. That's so cool. You know what? No person has ever been to the red planet Mars yet. What if it's you? What if you wind up being that very first person who gets to go to Mars? What if you get to be the first kid to say, you know what? I'm going to explore that planet and I'll be the scientist to discover lots of things that can help people. Maybe you'll be the first one to say, I'm going to live on Mars with my kitty cat. I don't know, there's no cats there. But you know what? If humans get to Mars, maybe it'll be safe enough to bring cats once they have had enough crews go. So if you enjoyed that story and wanna hear more stories about space, let me know, because I love talking about space. I could do stories about space all day. So let's do it. Let's do it again, yeah? We'll do more space stories. So thanks, friends. My name is Teacher Bando. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to go. I'm going to blast off, and I'll see you later. Bye, friends.